Hi. Uh, we're going to start working on finishing this piece. Uh, and of course, where you start is cleaning up a 3D print. I remember when I got my 3D printer, first 3D printer, which was only maybe six months ago. Uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos, so I don't know why I thought you were just going to like turn it on and print. Uh, but if you're starting printing 3D props or 3D anything, um, take the time when you first get it, flatten the bed, or level the bed, level the bed, level the bed. It is so important. Read, do your research, and then try to print something really small. <laughs> I try to print some huge thing the first time. So, the print... A on a CR10, it looks amazing. Uh, on high quality, this thing is wicked smooth. It looks really nice, great detail. But you know, there are some uh, little problems here and there that I can see. One of the most parts, even though I sort of really did dial in the retraction, I'm getting a lot of some, not a lot, but I'm getting some stringing in between all these shapes. There's so many of them. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, A, to sand this, I'm just going to go over this fairly lightly, the outside, because it's supposed to be an old relic, right? Uh, a little bit, just to get the lines off. I don't like to have print lines, okay? That means I do a lot of sanding. And this, I'm not going to do a ton, but enough to get rid of those lines, because I don't like them, because then it says, it just screams, this is a 3D print. So, uh, I will sand this thing down. but. I'm not going to be able to get in there in these little creases and crevices to get rid of these lines. And I actually saw uh, Uncle Jesse, he had a video where he used a heat gun. So I'm going to uh, apply a little bit of heat to this uh, to see if I can get this stringing sort of broken up. We're going to do it over in the work area, which is really just another part of the workbench uh, with a big cutting board on it. You might have guessed that. It's like movie magic, right? So let's go to the workbench. Okay, so if I hold this kind of just right in the light, I think you can see some of the stringies I'm talking about in here. And we're just going to try to get those. We're not going to sand those things. So we're going to use a heat source. We're going to use a little bit of heat for that. So just a little bit of heat. Now we don't want to go too hot because this is plastic and it will melt. So again, we'll just take it easy. No, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Do not use the torch. Never the torch. We're actually just going to use a heat gun, just a simple, um, simple heat gun. And I do have it on the high setting and I'm really being careful to move it around as much as I can. And it is definitely breaking that stringing up. It looks awesome. Okay, and remember, use low heat. I started with high heat and started noticing it was getting a little soft right here. So definitely make sure if you do that, you set it at low heat. But it, there, all the little stringies are gone, completely gone. Fantastic. Okay, now the next step is to sand. Again, I'm not gonna worry so much about the little nooks and crannies sanding because I'm not gonna be able to. And uh, even though it's got some print lines in there, I'm just gonna have to let them go. Now, usually what I'll do with sanding is, I usually use a sponge and those sanding sponges, but I am, uh, I'm all out. I've gotta pick up some more. See, I made a list and I forgot something on the list. So I need to work on that a little bit better. Now, if it's really rough, I do have a sanding tool I'll use uh, to give it a once over first and then maybe some Dremel, but it isn't. So this is one, uh, 120, it's a little too rough for this. So I'm probably just gonna start it out at a, um, at a 320, which is still pretty fine uh, for what this is, but uh, it's very smooth. So I think it's gonna work out just fine. 
So I'm just putting it on the edge of the table, rip a piece off, and you know, literally, I am going to just keep sanding away at this. And I would usually go from like this, like this 320. Uh, sometimes I'd start at 220, but I'm out of that as well. But I need to get a lot of sandpaper. So I'll, I'll go from that down to here. And then I'll even have these little specialty sheets. Not really specialty sheets, but you can I'll put a link to where you can get these. They're like sample sheets. Uh, and you can get like a big pack of them. They send you assorted uh, sandpaper. And uh, these are extra fine stuff. I mean, 400. Uh, when I do helmets and stuff, I'll go even lower than that, or higher, I guess, uh, than that. So there's a bunch of 400s, but in that same pack, you then you might get a 1,000. Uh, and I think the highest one that they sent me in this pack, I want to say is a, this is a 2,000, it's like paper. Uh, I think there's a 4,000 in there. Now, I won't use 4,000 on this, but I will... Um, you know, just keep working this all the way around. And you can see why a sponge, those sponge um, sandpaper things would be so much better for this, uh, just in how you hold on to it. Now you can make all kinds of tools and uh, maybe we'll work on some of those videos. Uh, but right now I'm just going to sort of keep sanding away at this. And who knows, we might, uh, because this is fairly boring. I'm not going to show the whole thing of me standing forever. Uh, and maybe we'll go do a little time lapse. Actually, it's not time lapse. It's just speeding up the film. Okay, so that was just really a light sanding. I'm probably going to give it a little bit more sand just to, you know, make sure I got some of the lines at least off of the outer sort of sort of bumpy areas. Now, some people use that XTC 3D. Uh, I've used that sometimes, but I find that it sort of can also gum things up because it's that, it's very thick and viscous, and there's so much detail on this. I don't want to uh, ruin it or obfuscate it. So I'm uh, just going to not do that. I'm going to do some sanding. Now, after we get all this sanding done, uh, we will, of course, I'll sand this some more. And then I will go ahead and sand this edge and do a little bit of sanding on these. But there's some detail in here you don't want to get rid of. But I've got to heat these up to get rid of the stringies in here. And then once we're all done with the sanding, then we'll go to prime. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a light coat of primer now true since i'm going to be doing some gouging and some this and that and drilling uh for the leds i technically really don't need to prime it right now i just like to <laughs> i like to clean it up it makes it look neater and cleaner so i'm going to go ahead and do that anyway uh, but at this point i really technically don't need to but i'm gonna and you want to be sure to really shake that rattle can up because uh, all the good stuff's at the bottom and of course, I'm holding my phone as I'm doing this, so we're, it's like we're at an earthquake. Okay. And you know, like most, and when of course using your spray paint, make sure you start off of the object a little bit and then start sweep it. And why I like to also give this some primer right off the bat is, I thought I got all those little wispy things out of there, all those little pieces of um, stringy stuff you can see there. And I didn't, but when it's all black and shiny like that, it's hard to see. When you put the primer on, you can really see it. 
So I'm gonna go in there with a little rasp and take that stuff out. But this is pretty good just for the first little quick coat. And I didn't use the fillable primer the, because I didn't want to sort of gum up any of the little tiny um, detail areas. Again, this is supposed to be looking an old thing, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And I didn't wear gloves, so I'm getting spray paint on me. Okay, so we've got rid of the stringy stuff in there. And we've done a bunch of sanding, which was so exciting. And we've given it the first coat of primer. Uh, now I'm probably not gonna give it another coat of primer, just one to sort of help the black paint take. And it's filler primer, so it'll get in there and sort of maybe fill some of those little tiny uh, areas. I went really light with that primer because again, I, it has a lot of nooks and crannies and I don't wanna fill those. So I really just went lightly over it. So this is very cool, we've got the primer in. Now the next step in this is gonna really be where it gets a little tricky, where we're gonna start working on at least drilling some holes and making some spaces for the electronics. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So again, if you like the video, please subscribe and click like, and I really appreciate it. And for everyone who has subscribed, I appreciate you, thank you very much. This is fun, I love doing this. Um, so look for part three coming up soon. Let's give it some primer. And I dropped the phone.